Hey guys, welcome back. Mike here at Image Tutorials. Well guys, uh, the other day I did a tutorial on Bifrost and uh, I promised in that video that I would uh, do a follow-up on that, how to create a splash in Maya 2015 using Bifrost. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Now, nothing fancy. We're going to keep it pretty basic so it's uh, understandable for everyone. Okay, and that said, let's get started. Now, first we're gonna create a container for our fluid. So we're just gonna create a cube. And we're gonna pull that up. We're gonna right click, go to face, select that face, go to edit mesh, down to face extrude. Hit R to scale that in just a bit. Hit G to repeat that command and hit W to pull that down, okay? So that is our box shape, if you will. Next, we are going to create our uh, Bifrost object. Okay, so we're going to create another cube. I'm going to pull that up. I'm going to switch to our top view. Hit 4 for wireframe mode. Let's move that guy in. And align it with one of the corners. There we go. We're going to right click at our vertex. Drag click these two and drag that out. Right click these two and drag that down. And then from this view, we're going to hit four as well. And let's see, that's our object here. We're going to bring that up. We're going to right click our vertex, take these two and bring it up just a little. Okay. So here's our container object mode. Here's our container, and that will be our fluid. Okay, <clears throat> cool. Now, what we're going to do first, we are going to um, select our container, or, or sorry, our fluid object, if you will. And with that selected, we're going to go to Bifrost and we're going to select Create Liquid. Okay, which will create this box here, and you see these little blue dots, maybe hard to see, but okay. And with that selected, we're going to shift select our container and we're going to go to, uh, where do you go? Biofrost and add collider. Okay. And as you can see down here, it succeeded. Cool. All right. Now we need an object to hit the uh, water surface, right? Okay. So let's take a polygon sphere. Just uh, drag that up, move that in. Just uh, make sure it's over our water surface. Here we go. Height wise, that's good. All right. Now we need that to act as a collider as well. So again, we're going to select that box, shift select our sphere. Again, go to Bifrost and we are going to add a collider all right now let's animate this guy okay so let's do i don't know 150 frames there we go we are on frame one we're gonna hit s to keyframe that that yeah there we go we got a red line so it's our keyframe and then we're gonna move to let's say frame 40. We're going to move this guy down and in. Make sure it's not sticking out there. Okay. And we're going to hit S again. Now let's just scrub through that to see if that is moving correctly. Okay. And now we're going to hit play. And as you can see down here, it's starting to calculate our frames for our simulation. Okay. So that's going to run for 150 frames. So I'm just going to pause the video and I'll be back when that's done. Okay, guys. So our um, frames are played out. So if I hit play, there we go. I'm going to go back to frame one. Just going to select that guy. And I'm going to hit control H to hide that object. So we just see our water, right? Now, this doesn't look like much, uh, but like I showed you in the previous uh, video, 
it's really important to when you want to get a realistic water effect to have correct lighting reflection and so forth okay so we're just going to quickly set up the scene a little bit we'll take a polygon plane and we'll just stretch that out a lot okay let's right click and assign a new material We'll take something nice and reflective, so we'll do a Fong E. And we'll change that color to white. Let's take our box here. We'll, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see if we will texture that. Yeah, why not? Okay, so we're gonna right click, assign new material. We're gonna go with a Lambert. I'm going to hit my checkered box. Yeah, here we go. Come on. Yeah. We're going to go with file. I'm going to click on my folder. And there is the tile texture that I used before. I'm going to hit my checkered box here. Okay. Let's tweak that a little bit. Select it. Go to create UVs. Let's try automatic mapping. Let's see if that works out for us. It's not fantastic. Let's see if we can tweak that. Make sure we're in object mode. Edit UVs, UV texture editor. Okay, right click UVs, drag select. Let's see what that does for us. Yeah. do that I want, don't want to spend too much time on that but it's it's okay all right so we got that let's uh, give this guy some uh, color right click object mode there we go right click assign new material let's go with a um, I don't know let's make that thing chrome and those of you who have seen my videos you know that I'm fond of reflective objects so Material tab, presets, chrome, and replace. There we go. We are going to set up uh, image based lighting. So we're going to go to our render settings. Make sure you're a metal ray because that's a requirement to render uh, by frost. Okay. We're going to go to indirect, indirect lighting, sorry. And we're going to select image based lighting. Hit create. Select Global Illumination, Final Gathering, go to Caustics, make sure that's selected, that's good. Quality tab, let's do 1.5, ray tracing's on, that's good. Common tab, we will take HD 1080. We'll select our HDRI image for our indirect lighting. And mine are right here. Uh, let's do a, um, I want some diverse light actually, but yeah, we'll do this one. All right, that's nice. Then we need to find the proper frame that we want to render, okay? So what we're going to do is we are going to, and actually we're going to set up some additional light as well. That's going to be slightly too dark. Create light, point light, pull that up, pull that out. Hit seven on your keyboard so we can see what's going on. Actually, that's not bad. All right. Now we're going to go back to frame one, we're going to hit play and we're going to stop at the point where we believe to have a good splash in view. Okay, so hit play. Just have that generate. Wait a sec. Yeah, I changed some stuff, so it's uh, rebuilding the animation. So I'll just uh, pause for a sec. All right, guys, so we're all done. Now we're just going to um, hit play and we're going to stop our frame at a point where we believe we have a good splash okay so hit play 
Okay, so we're gonna drag it a bit longer. Okay. Now let's just give this a quick render try. Okay. Well, there we go, guys. This is our final render. Now it's not ideal because it's a still image, right? And preferably you would want to see an animation. And I'll get into that in a sec. But what you can do though is you can scrub through your animation. And in an ideal world, you would probably want to have a situation where your object is just going through the surface and starting to move the liquid. So that would be about here, okay? So we got uh, a lot of water displacement, if you will. So we'll give this guy a try, okay? So I'm just gonna hit render again. Well, guys, while we're rendering this out, you can definitely see that there's some water displacement, but it's not the actual splash that we were all waiting for, right? And one of the reasons for that is probably that the shape that's going through the surface is a sphere. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly replace that sphere by a cube to get maximum water displacement. And let's see how that looks. Okay. Well, guys, here we are. Well, I replaced our sphere with this cube here, okay? And I played out the uh, the frames again. And as you will see, this has a dramatically different effect, okay? And if we wanna see a big flash, uh, splash, sorry, check this out. Okay, we got water going everywhere, right? Very, very cool. And I'll just uh, play that out. You see all the droplets falling down. So it looks really nice. So that said, we're now going to scrub through the scene to get to a point where we think we have a good shot to render. And maybe we'll just, uh, let's see. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Okay. So let's do this. All right. We're just going to quickly set up a resolution gate yeah cool all right and here we go see you guys in a sec all right guys here's our final render um, maybe you see something off well the thing that you see that's off is the fact that you have water that's not moving and that's unnatural okay so the best effect that you get is to actually batch render these and uh, turn it into an animation, okay? Now keep in mind though, that although it's only 150 frames, right? So that would be about a six second video. Uh, on my system, it would take me about seven and a half hours, right? So that's not really feasible right now. But that said, uh, have fun with this tutorial. Uh, if you've got any questions, as always, let me know. Thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.